All right, everybody, welcome back. It's good to have you back. Uh, we got the uh, tax stamp back from the ATF just a couple of days ago. It's Christmas Eve, so what better Christmas present than a brand new rifle? Uh, first thing I do when I get back a tax stamp, in this case, it's uh, an e-form, so they just send a PDF file. I always make sure and print out at least three copies. Uh, I typically will go ahead and make sure and laminate two. Uh, once I've laminated them, we got this little gadget here. And we'll punch a set of holes in it, all down one side. And then we'll take the rest of them we've got, and we're going to slide this slide that in like so. And this is going to open up the little bindings. Now I've got all of my uh, tax stamps in here together. This way, if I'm ever going anywhere, uh, load up any of my NFA items into a container and toss this in there. I like to keep a laminated copy in case uh, somebody spills their coffee on it. Uh, it doesn't get ruined. Uh, also, I keep a copy of my trust documents in here. So if I'm out and about and anybody asks uh, about the legality, we can prove that we have a tax stamp. Uh, and since the tax stamp is actually issued to the trust, uh, we've got a copy of the trust document showing that uh, I am a responsible party on the trust. One other thing I'd like to talk about before we go outside and actually start doing the assembly. Um, I didn't mention this previously, but since we built this one off of a 80% lower, uh, we have to add complete manufacturing information on here. So, first thing that's required, of course, is who manufactured this firearm. In this case, uh, it's going to be the name of the trust. So, we start off with the name of the trust, and just like any other uh, manufactured firearm, uh, we've got to put the city and state on there. Next, we've got to give this firearm a serial number. Uh, once you've got the... This is, of course, your own serial number, uh, and you forgot to add a model number. Again, you don't necessarily have to call this an AR-15. You can give it your own model number to make it unique to you. Uh, and, of course, they also require that uh, caliber be engraved on the firearm. It does not have to necessarily be the lower receiver. Uh, in this case... This firearm has the caliber engraved on the barrel itself, and it is visible even through the uh, handguard, so that uh, will satisfy our requirements. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to get together, we're going to go outside to uh, the shop, and we're going to start our assembly of the new short-barreled rifle. Okay, so as I promised previously, what we're going to do this time is uh, we're going to do a complete assembly without stopping. Uh, this way, anybody who's looking into doing this themselves, uh, you can see this is not the most time-consuming thing in the world. Uh, also, going to give you a few little tips and tricks I've learned over the years. Uh, they do make this AR-15 bench block, which works really, really well for doing this. Um, so we're going to start out with our lower. <clears throat> we'll put our lower in place here. The and we'll find our parts kits. So 
So we will start off We're going to start off with the uh, bolt catch. We'll start by putting our spring in place. And then the plunger. Now one of the things that I've done for years, because it works well for me, uh, for my military friends out there, you'll recognize the six inch wooden handled applicator. I'll just take a short bit of this. And this is just the perfect size to hold it in place. Now, we take our roll pin, and next we're going to take our roll pin punches, and we'll find the appropriate size. And it should be, yep. We'll get it started here. Uh, and once we've got it started, Remove the roll pin punch, and we can finish driving it in. To the flush point, with a brass punch, this way it doesn't tear up the end. And then we use a different punch here for roll pins to take it down just below flush. This way it's about on both sides. Now next, what I will go ahead and do is I will install the trigger guard. We'll need to find our appropriate punch for that as well.
again once it's started I prefer to use a brass punch here because it will not damage the end the way a steel one Then again, a regular roll pin punch so that we can even this out. And then we'll go ahead next with our magazine release. Okay, the next thing is I will do the front pivot pin. Now, for those of you who have never done one of these before, they make a special tool to help you install this. And if you're going to do a lot of these, I do suggest buying one. Um, the first thing you want to do, check, make sure everything fits well. Uh, after you Duracoat or Cerakote one of these, uh, it may be very tight. If it is, just take a 25 caliber bore brush, brass, run it through there a few times. That will usually loosen it up. So it's a quarter inch pin. It's got a hole in it, which allows us to slide in our spring, followed by the detent pin. I've had way too much coffee today. Once it's in place, the other half will allow you to push in all the way. And rotate. Now the spring of the detent pin is locked in place underneath. Your take down pin, simply slide it across. Once it's through, rotate it till you hear the click. Now it's locked in place.
All right. Next, I like to take care of the fire control group. And We'll start off with our trigger and our trigger spring. And once that's installed, uh, disconnect your spring and it goes here at the back. Fat end goes down to hold it in place. Make sure it's seated firmly so that it's not going to come out. And next is the disconnect. Now, a little trick I've learned over the years is to take an old punch or an old pin that is the correct size and line it up and insert it at this point. Now this pin only goes through pretty much shoulder to shoulder here. Um, the advantage is once you place this in here, it can be a real pain in the butt sometimes to get your pin to go all the way through and still try to line up the disconnect. So this way, once it's all lined up and held in place, you can line it up here Insert your pin. Now it goes straight through. Everything's held in place. We'll use a brass hammer here. So now we take out our little tool pin here we used and we'll put that away. But now our trigger's completely in place. The disconnect's in place, and we didn't have to fight with it. Next, we're going to take our hammer, and we'll add our hammer spring. And we're going to find our appropriate punch here. And let's see. So these little feet are going to stick across those little openings there. We'll put it at the back. Roll it towards the front. And now I will line up the pin. So, get that. Our pins lined up. All right, now we've got our hammer in place, trigger in place. We want to go ahead, put our hammer to the rear. Okay, so next we're going to go with our selector switch. And we put the hammer to the rear to make inserting the selector switch easier. I'll show you why. You let that go. The tail end of the trigger assembly gets in the way. You can put that in place, and if you want to, you can go ahead and let that go forward, and that'll keep your selector switch from falling out on you. Now that we're here, well, the next thing we want to do 
is take our detent for the selector switch and we'll put that in place. Now we're going to take our pistol grip, our screw for that, our washer, We're going to get that in place. And we want to make sure we take our spring, and this is going to be the stiffer of the springs we've got left. We're going to put that right there. Hold it while we get started. Okay, so... We are once we're started we want to keep an eye out make sure that our spring is compressed properly we'll hold that in place and finish tightening it okay Alright, so now we're going to start off and we're going to get our buffer tube and we're going to take our castle nut and we're going to spin the castle nut all the way down. We're going to take our base plate. We're also going to make sure that the little nipple is going towards the front of the firearm. We'll put that in place. Now we want to get it to right here before it covers up our hole and we will put in our spring and our detent and we can use this same pin we used earlier. That's our stopping point right there. Or, let's see. There we go. So, once we get to this point where it's in place properly, and I'm hoping you can see that, um, we're actually going to push this in. Maybe. We're going to go slightly past where we should be. And the reason is that's going to expose this small hole here. We're going to take our takedown pin. And again, we're going to make sure that that moves freely in there. And we'll put it in place. We don't need to worry about whether or not it is actually lined up yet. We'll take our detent pin if we can hold on to it long enough. And we're going to drop that down. We'll follow that with our spring. So, you'll notice the spring sticks out, so what we want to do is we want to compress that spring as best we can. And this is really one of the only spots that I'm not a big fan of. Um, Because if you're not careful, the spring won't compress and it'll get twisted. And what you actually wind up with is getting this guy bent out of shape. So 
compress it, get it in place where it looks right, and snug up your castle nut. Once the castle nut's snugged up, now we can turn that until we hear the click. We know it's in place now. And we may have to get this other side momentarily. So, now we need to get this tight, so we're going to back out a little bit here. All right, so we've got a magazine vice tool. And we will. Let's make sure we got this right. There we go. We'll place that in the vice. And remember, you don't have to torque the hell out of this. Okay, so now and we will. Okay, so we now have this in place, and our lower is actually completed this time. So, we will set this aside, uh, we'll go ahead and insert the buffer and buffer spring. Now we will get started on our upper. Okay, we flip our block over. First thing we want to do is put in our forward assist. The nice thing about the way this block is made, when you put your forward assist in place, in order to actually put your pin in, you've got to hold this thing forward and this block is actually designed to do just that if they get it lined up just right This one may be a little bit longer. So, again, we're going to find our correct pin here. Mm -hmm. All right. We may have to start this one the old fashioned way.
And like I said, of course, it would be the time I'm trying to demonstrate when I have the problem. So, Alright, so next we're going to move forward. We're going to install our ejection port cover. There is a small C clip on the one end. That's already in place today. So we're going to start out, make sure the C clip is to the front of the weapon. Okay. Now I'll hold on to the short end. We'll make maybe we'll hold on to the short end. Okay, attach that, and we're good. So next we're going to install our barrel.
Okay, so next we want to get our we want to get our torque wrench and we want to set it to 35 foot pounds. Excuse me. And we never do this just one time, so and I'll show you why. Take a piece of tape here. To use as a reference point. Make double sure we are actually at... 35. So once we got it tightened up the first time, loosen it. Now this one is not as apparent as some of them I have seen. But you'll notice how each time it does get progressively further and sometimes it's fairly significant. So always make sure you do that at least three times. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and since this will fit, we're going to go ahead. Now, ordinarily, installing uh, the muzzle device is on these. Uh, they recommend putting rock set on there. Uh, we're not going to do that today because I'm probably going to change this one out uh, for a different brand later on. Now, of course, like I said before, this is for um, advanced armaments. Uh, they make a special tool for that. All right.
Of course, we're still new, so this is uh, still stiff when it comes to our detent here. It'll work its way looser as we use it more. One of the things I have discovered is with this particular style, uh, if you're not careful, you may not be able, if you just put your uh, hand guard on, you may not be able to turn it. So this one's actually requiring a little bit of a gap. Uh, we're going to take... We want to make sure we're lined up here. All right, so next we want to put our side on. Oh. All right, so we've actually got assembly complete here. And we're going to go ahead, we'll run a function check on it momentarily.
Okay, so next thing we need to do before we do that is go ahead and install Okay, so, safe, does not fire. Move it to fire. Let out on the trigger. We hear a clunk, that is our sear resetting. And we will try it again. And it will not go into safe from here. Back into safe. And that's it. We are assembled. I'm going to take a few moments and clean up here. And then we will uh, proceed to do a quick bore side on this. And we'll go from there. Okay, so we've got the laser bore sider installed. And it's got us a little dot on the other end of the room here. And we'll see if we can't show that to you. So now we'll just basically uh, adjust until our little red dot is lined up with that red dot. And then we should be able to be right on paper once we're ready to start shooting. And then we can side it in completely once it's done. And it actually looks like we are almost exactly on there right now, which is very unusual. <coughs> okay, we've had to wait an extra week for ammunition thanks to winter storms throughout the country. Um, Today we've got the ammo in, we're going to do some test firing. Uh, we're also going to, like we said the last time, we're going to try out our uh, shot track camera. Uh, we've also got the new uh, chronograph in this week. This is uh, Competition Electronics Pro Chrono DLX uh, with Bluetooth, so it's got an app on the phone to tell us and record all of our information for us. Uh, We're also going to uh, we're going to take a look at our ammunition here momentarily. I uh, want to give you a little bit of info regarding uh, weights. Uh, weighed the rifle in by itself at 5 pounds, 8.8 .8 ounces. Uh, empty magazine is 5.6. Uh, full magazine with uh, the 40 grain bullets uh, is just 13.3 ounces. Uh, that gives us a loaded weight with the rifle of 6 pounds, 7.1 ounces. Uh, so it is really lightweight. We're going to show you our ammunition here. So to kind of give you an understanding of what we've got. Right here is a 50 Beowulf. And this is kind of on the top end of what uh, a standard AR platform is going to shoot.
450 Bushmaster. Six five Grendel Standard five five six. We've already showed you the little twenty two long rifle. And here's our five point seven for comparison. All right, so we're going to get out. We're going to do some test firing, uh, function check, make sure everything is cycling the way it should. Uh, we're going to get it sighted in a little bit closer than what it is, and then we're going to run uh, some chronograph tests to see just how fast these little bullets are traveling. And that's coming right up. So we're going to start off with... Uh, a magazine of one round and a second magazine of one round. Uh, bolt closed. We'll charge it. Make sure everything's functioning properly. Okay, so both magazines locked to the rear after they were uh, discharged, uh, fed properly. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to go two and two. And now we'll go three and three.
Okay, so everything functioned uh, extremely well. And we're going to have a look at this target. And it looks like we're hitting uh, low and to the left. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to try to get it a little bit closer to center. Okay, now we're going to do some speed tests. Eighteen fifty six. Eighteen twenty three. Eighteen twenty seven. Eighteen thirty nine. Eighteen forty seven. Eighteen twenty one.
1813. 1836. Looks like that was 1836 again. 1827. All right, let's see if putting a can on here affects our speed any. Eighteen forty three, eighteen fifty six, eighteen forty eight, eighteen twenty three, eighteen forty two, eighteen forty eight, eighteen forty seven. 17 shots we fired through the chronograph. Uh, average speed was um, 1,836 feet per second. Um, extreme spread was only 43 feet per second, so it's a fairly consistent round. Um, standard deviation was 13 feet per second. So 1,836, we'll take a look. Bullet weight of 40. 1,836 for our speed. So um, that gives us an average energy of 299 uh, foot-pounds. Uh, that's right at 406 joules if you measure it that way. Uh, and it's a power factor of 43.4. And I do want to let you know, uh, I wanted to try something. I had a piece of quarter-inch steel plate uh, behind the target that was taking all of the impacts. And we're going to take a look at just how much damage this little 40 grain bullet did. Okay, so this is the impact area. And we'll try to get 
kind of an angle shot so you can see just how much damage these little 40 grain bullets did. And now we're going to look at the back side. And again, this is quarter inch steel plate. This is not armor steel. This is uh, just standard mild steel for structural purposes. Uh, but I got to say that little tiny bullet does uh, has quite an impact on it. Uh, dug around out there and of course hitting a solid steel wall. Um, that's about all I could find of bullet fragments. So I'm real pleased with the way this turned out. Uh, again, functioned flawlessly. Uh, really, really liked the way it felt. Uh, this being the first time I've ever dealt with the 5.7. Um, really, really light recoil, uh, which is, of course, part of the uh, advantage to it. And we'll kind of show you our targets here. So with our initial target, uh, from us just doing a bore sighting the other day, everything was hitting low and to the left. Uh, we walked it on up, got it pretty much centered. And then when we were doing our speed check, everything's hitting just a little bit high. There's a couple of uh, strays there from my double taps, but you'll notice all the splatter, uh, and that's background splatter from these bullets impacting on that quarter inch plate and bouncing back to the front. <laughs> so I'm really happy with the chronograph as well. Like I said this just came in this week. Um, I really like the way it syncs up with the phone and through the Bluetooth with Walker uh, hearing protection. Uh, if you haven't used this particular style from Walkers, uh, like I said, the these work much like any of the other uh, headsets that are the wraparound style. Uh, you can use these to make phone calls. You can listen to your uh, music while you're out on the range. Uh, these will also uh, allow you to listen to everything that's going on around you. It will even amplify ambient noises while still shutting out um, the sound of gunfire. Uh, and again, we'll uh, try to get more of this done later. And uh, to let you know, uh, again, it's New Year's Eve, so I'm wishing every one of you a very happy New Year. Uh, hope 2023 brings you all happiness and joy. Uh, as for me, I've got just a couple of weeks, and then I've got to have knee replacement surgery. Uh, so before I get a chance to actually get out on a, a combat range and uh, really put this thing through some tests, i got to recover from, uh, from that. Um, that's coming up in just two weeks. Uh, Doctor tells me that I've got to be on a walker for a week or two, maybe a little bit longer once I get out. And of course, uh, got a walker ready. And everybody out there knows you've got to be prepared. And, of course, I've got to always make sure that I'm prepared. So, uh, installed a rifle rack on this one because you never can be too prepared. Uh, the only thing that's left now is it needs a cup holder. And, uh, like I said, we'll be seeing that coming up real soon. And um, I'm hoping to get back with you all. I will keep you all posted on uh, the recovery.
And I certainly thank you all for joining in so far. And like I said, once we get recovered from surgery and can find a good outdoor range for this, uh, we're going to run this rifle through the paces. Oh, yeah. There's one more thing before we go. Uh, as we said before, the whole concept around box o gun is uh, you can't afford it all at once. Buy it part by part. And it's always a case of you finish a project, you get started on the next one. So we're going to get started on the next one. Um, we've got a sling and base plate, just like we did for the last one. We'll go ahead and add in a lower parts kit. We've got a lower receiver. Uh, we've got a complete buffer, spring, buffer tube, and that's Getting our next project started, you want to stick around for that. Uh, it'll be another, uh, another SBR is what we're going with on this one. So stick around, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can come back the next time as soon as we get uh, something new out there. I appreciate everybody listening in and watching. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody, and I wish you all the best, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.